My dearly beloved in Christ, scripture scholars tell us that the birth of our Redeemer was followed by his circumcision eight days later, the presentation in the temple 40 days later, the visit of the three kings to the Holy Family in Bethlehem, and then the flight into Egypt to escape Herod's wrath. In the middle of the night, St. Joseph was woken by an angel and told, Take the child and his mother and flee into Egypt. He immediately arose and fulfilled God's will. Bishop Goodyear says, God's ways are so different from ours. He might have given the Holy Family a longer warning than that of a few minutes, but he did not. He might have hidden them in some convenient place other than Egypt. Perhaps even Nazareth would have sufficed, but he did not. He might have relieved their anxiety, consulted their condition, helped their necessity in a thousand ways, but he did not. Even in the first instance, he might have so arranged that Herod should have known nothing or that the Magi should have found our Lord in some safer place, but he did not. He has preferred that his own should not be the most comfortable, the most prosperous, the most secure people in this world. To these he has said, as ever, forever saying, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is exceedingly great in heaven. My dear the beloved in Christ, when we're faced with crosses, we can so quickly despair, become angry, rebel, give up, or blame God. Instead of increasing our prayers, we quit them if we do not receive an immediate answer or if they're not answered as we desire them to be. When our sufferings don't make sense, we cry out, why? When we have to undergo suffering that seems so unnecessary and that could, perhaps we think, with a little forethought, have been so easily avoided, Instead of allowing ourselves to give way to discontent and regrets and even rebellion, how much better would it be to say, yes, it is quite true, Jesus could have prevented this, but he's treating me in some measure as he treated his blessed mother in St. Joseph. Not saving me the pain, trouble, and inconvenience, but letting me have the opportunity of sanctifying my soul and of gaining greater merit. The lesson of the flight into Egypt is a lesson of faith, of trust in God and perseverance. The Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph are the models we must imitate when we are beset with sufferings of any kind. The whys and wherefores of our suffering may never be fully known in our lifetimes. Their mystery and meaning will be mostly hidden from us. Yet like Our Lady and St. Joseph, we must practice the virtue of hope, intensify our prayers, and deepen our faith in God's loving plan for us. From a purely human viewpoint, many sufferings seem inopportune and useless. Their occurrence is to be avoided, if at all possible. However, when viewed with the supernatural in mind, suffering takes on an entirely different perspective. All suffering, private or public, minor or great, can become a precious and most effective means of elevating the soul. My dear the beloved in Christ, some people have the opinion that it's impossible to harmonize suffering with God's mercy, justice, and providence. They do not realize that God permits suffering in order to help us to save our souls. Suffering can be used as a means of fostering many virtues. It has caused many souls to return to God from a life of worldliness or tepidity, since it shows the uncertain nature of temporal things and th turns thoughts to the eternal. Suffering may preserve the soul from sin. When things go well, many people find no need for God in their lives. Suffering can teach humility and help us realize our need for God. 
when it's patiently born, suffering can also teach us to be more understanding and charitable to others. St. Paul addressed the Romans saying, for those who love God, all things work together unto good. All things. Each and every kind of suffering, including even the greatest calamity, can be made conformable to the highest ideals of a Catholic. That is, eternal salvation, sanctity, the glory of God, and the good of souls. This conformity, however, is impossible without the love of God. Further, it can only be possible in proportion to our love for God. Love is essential, for it is by love alone that Jesus transformed the cross, a terrible instrument of torture, into a most efficacious instrument for the glory of God and the salvation of mankind. My dearly beloved in Christ, many people pray to be delivered from their suffering, to be released from their cross. When these prayers are not immediately answered, they tend to become discouraged and troubled. They feel that their prayers are in vain and useless because it seems that God has not granted their request. Many of us forget that God's grace is sufficient to guide and sustain us through the temptations and trials of life. We often ask, why don't we always see the result of our prayers? Almighty God tells us not to judge by appearances, but according to the judgment of faith. Faith always tells the truth, while appearances sometimes deceive. God answers our prayers in two ways. He either grants us what we ask, or he gives us something better, something more useful to us. We do not know how to pray properly, but God has mercy on our ignorance. Almighty God receives our prayer with kindness, but he will not give thing, give us things that are harmful to us or things we do not immediately need. My dear the beloved in Christ, religion teaches that God guides and leads the faithful through life so that good can be drawn from evil, which he permits. God knows our particular path through life. Although all are tempted to make passion and error the rule of life, he gives everyone the graces they need to live virtuously and uprightly. Just close with a thought from St. Alphonsus. God desires only what's best for us, namely our sanctification. This is the will of God, says the Apostle, says the apostle your sanctification. Let us take care, therefore, to subdue our own will, uniting it always to the will of God. And thus also let us endeavor to control our mind, reflecting that everything that God does is best for us. Whoever does not act thus will never find true peace. All the perfection which can be attained in this world, which is a place of purification and consequently a place of trouble and affliction, Consist in suffering patiently those things which are opposed to our self-love. In order to suffer them with patience, there is no more efficacious means than a willingness to suffer them in order to do the will of God. Submit yourself then to him and be at peace. He that acquiesces with the divine will in everything is always at peace. And nothing that happens to him can make him despair. And then he closes, The just man knows well that whatever happens in the world happens through the will of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.